friends today we are going to discuss about the remaining part of reflection the remaining applications regarding reflection okay so physics is a very interesting subject because it deals with our regular lives there are many applications we are going to deal in physics but we don't know that it is actually physics concepts are involved in that so let me uh, give one small demonstration here for example you might have seen in bedrooms there are makeup mirrors are there are some mirrors kept here so that you can see the complete image of your body so for that if you consider the mirror before you how much should be the size of the mirror so that you can see the complete body posture from head to legs if you are 6 feet the mirror size should be at least 3 feet so that you can see your complete image so today i'm going to discuss what should be the age of the what should be the size of the mirror so that you can see the complete image of the body so here the first explanation is a man of height h so what is the height of a man his height is h for example then what happens a man of height requires a mirror of length at least equal to h by 2 that means half of his size the meaning here is the height of the man will be equal to 2 times the height of the mirror or height of the mirror should be exactly equal to half of the height of the man okay this is the concept here so how can how can we explain this concept try to understand by using the geometry geometrical basics will help you to understand the concept over here so for that reason let us consider this is the body com complete body of a human being this part is going to be the head this part is going to be the legs and this is the eye from where you are going to see this is a mirror these are the edges of the mirror like let us uh, take the edges of the mirror as m and m dash so now the light ray starts focusing on the edges of the mirror the light ray comes from the eye strikes the edge of the topmost point of a mirror gets reflected back and falls exactly to the tip of the head and the next light ray falls the bottom tip of bottom edge of the mirror gets reflected back it falls on the legs here okay so from legs to your head you can see the complete image on the mirror okay so for that reason how can we explain here so you all know that this is going to be the mirror so the light ray starts reflects back it follows the laws of reflection that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection that is alpha is equal to alpha here so second time also it follows the bottom point also it is going to follow the laws of reflection this is also angle of incidence angle of reflection both are going to be same here so as i said that this part of the diagram is considered to be x this part is also going to be x why both the sides are going to be x here the condition according to geometry is sides opposite to equal angles are going to be equal sides opposite to equal angles are going to be equal so this is also x this is also x next if you observe down here this is angle beta this is also going to be angle beta so here also you will consider y from here to here it is from i to this point it is going to be y and from here to lex it is also going to be y so what is the condition here the same thing here the sides opposite to equal angles are going to be equal so this is x and x this is y and y so if you observe here this part is x this part is also x this part is y this part is also y so completely this part is going to be the height of the mirror so what are you going to write height of the mirror so height of the mirror is going to be x plus y so height of the mirror if you observe it is going to be x plus y then what is the height of the man what is the height of the man what is the height of the human body from his head and the legs okay so how will you find out this one as i said that and sides opposite to equal angles are going to be equal on both the cases here top 
point as well as bottom point here. So what I'm going right now, if you see the total size of the man over here, you are going to write x plus x plus y plus y. So this is x plus x and y plus y. So here you write height of the man as 2x plus 2y. Okay, so what I'm going to write here, the next step is height of the man is equal to 2 into x plus y. So if you observe here, height of the man is equal to 2 times of x plus y, whereas x plus y is nothing but the height of the mirror. Okay, so this I have proved now that height of the man should be double times the height of the mirror. Okay, that was a very simple concept here. I think you all understood. The next concept which I am going to discuss here is to see the complete image of the wall. For example, a person is standing here. This is going to be the complete room. This is going to be the room here. So in this complete room, a man is standing at the, exactly the middle of the room and a mirror is kept on the wall of the room like this. So here the mirror is kept. A man is standing at the middle of the room. The length of the room is from uh, length of the room starts from here to here and this is going to be the wall and this is going to the mirror so man exactly stands in the middle so I am dividing the room as half of the room is taken as x the remaining half of the room is also considered to be x only okay so now according to the laws of reflection here if you draw one line over here this angle is going to be alpha this is also going to be alpha so from I, the light ray falls on the edge of the mirror at the topmost point that is B. It gets reflected back, covers the top of the wall. The next light ray, when it falls at the bottom edge of the mirror, gets reflected back and covers the bottom point of the wall. So try to understand the light ray diagram over here. It's very simple actually. The lines starts from the I, falls on the tip of the mirror gets reflected back and cover the tip of the wall and the next light ray falls in the bottom point of the mirror C and gets reflected back and exactly touches as the bottom point of the wall. Now if you extend here these two light rays the image of the wall you are going to see that side okay so you're going to extend here you are going to see the image of the wall at this place okay so now my question here is what should be the height of the mirror so that a person standing in the middle of the room can see the complete image of the wall which is placed here which is kept at this place so how do you find out that one for that reason it's very simple you can consider triangle ABC triangle ABC is exactly similar to triangle AEF. So, triangle ABC is exactly similar to triangle AEF. Okay, so what is the reason behind that? Why these two triangles are called as similar triangles? You can consider here, this is angle, th this is angle here. This is one angle, this is one angle. These two angles are going to be same as it can be considered as corresponding angles. This is one line, this is wall, this is a mirror, both are going to be parallel to each other. So these two lines considered as corresponding angles. These two angles are considered to be corresponding angles. Similarly, these two angles can also be considered as corresponding angles. Okay, and this angle is considered to be the common angle. So according to the concept of A, A, A similarity, we can prove that triangle ABC is exactly similar to triangle AEF. Okay, so once you prove that these two triangles are same, then the sides of the triangle ratios will give you the same identity here. So what is the meaning of this here? Let me discuss the concept over here. So as these two triangles are going to be similar, I can write AD, AD, The size, side AD by AG. AD for the small triangle, AG for the larger triangle 
the ratio will be exactly equal to BC of this side of the triangle as well as EF of this side of the triangle. So, as once you have proved that the triangles are going to be similar, we can write the sides of the triangles are making equal ratios like AD is to AG is equal to BC is to EF. So, we have proved this one. So, once you get this identity, it's very easy to understand the concept over here. So, what is AD here? So, AD, according to the diagram, as a man is exactly at the middle of the room, the from the middle of the room to the edge of the room is considered to be X. Okay, so AD is considered to be X here. Then what is AG? So from here to here, if it is AG, so it is X plus 2X. So this is X and this is going to be 2X. So therefore, completely, it is going to be 3X over here. So I am starting the measurement from this point to the edge of the the edge of the wall and this side is considered to be 3x over here okay so ad by ag can be considered as x by 3x which is equal to bc by ef so where bc is going to be the height of the mirror and ef is going to be the height of the wall okay I think it's clear to understand here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just cancelling this x and x. Once these two x and x is going to be cancelled, you'll get that height of the mirror is going to be height of the wall by 3. So I've just proved the concept over here very easily by understanding this diagram. Hope you have understood this concept nicely. It's very simple, nothing is there in that. Once you understand the diagram and you know the basics of the geometry, it's very easy to understand. So the first concept is the mirror which is placed before you should be half of your size. That means if you are 6 feet, the mirror should be at least 3 feet. If you are 5 feet, the mirror should be exactly or almost nearly 2.5 feet so that you can see the complete image. But in this case, what should be the size of the mirror so that you can see the wall completely inside the mirror then the answer for that is height of the mirror should be one third of the height of the wall. So that we have proved over here. 